Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Today I'm going to be working a little bit with plexiglass. And what I want to do is I want to make a new cover plate for the controls on the Firefly guitar. Now, going through the process of making sure that everything is grounded and using the shielding paint and everything else, adding extra wires for making sure everything is grounded and grounded properly, uh, having a plexiglass cover kind of like, well, kind of sucks because well, you're breaking the field of the Faraday cage that you've already made with the shielding tape and the extra grounding uh, with having a nice open area for you know frequencies or whatever that's in the air to get through to cause you noise or possibly noise through your amplifier from your guitar. Now, you could ground as much as possible and if you got some crappy pickups or some cheap pickups or whatever uh you're going to get some noise okay humbuckers do block out a lot of noise you know compared to single coils but sometimes when you got a cheap humbucker you may get a little bit of noise coming through your amp now, i'm not too sure of what the pickups are that came on the firefly but from what i was told uh they were kind of noisy I know there are humbuckers, but as far as the quality of them, you know, who knows where they got them from. Anyways, I'm going to show you a way to still make a Faraday cage with and still be able to view the inside of uh, the cavity. I kind of do a thing where if I'm going to kind of flash out a guitar or customize it or whatever in any way, redoing the rewiring, I kind of want the wiring to look nice too and not be a wired mess. Uh, everything has a place. It's going to stay there as long as the cover is stayed on and nobody's got their fingers inside there. All the wires are not going to move around. Well, I'm using the braided, cloth braided uh, wiring, which is kind of stiff in its own to where you can like bend it a certain way and it'll stay that way instead of the cheap plastic or uh, silicone plastic type of a rubber coating that they put on for some of the insulation on these guitars that uh, you really can't flex it in any certain way it's going to bend where it wants to bend or how it's going to be. unless there's like a solid piece of wire stranded wire you know you can't bend it really too much and, and keep the insulation the way you want it to kind of give it a nice view or a nice good looking custom install as far as your guitar goes now what i got here is i got a piece of plexiglass i got the old cover plate and i have a sharpie magic marker which i should be using a smaller one but i cannot find for the life of me my smaller sharpies so this has got a nice sharp point on it still what i want to do is i want to line up this bottom edge and this side edge knowing that they are square make sure there's no cracks or anything in the plexiglass itself uh so i'm going to go and line up the bottom edge now I need something that is going to be straight a nice flat edge to put up against the bottom of let's see let's see what I have here so I'm going to take and I'm going to put the bottom of this up against the plexiglass and I want to put the bottom of the cover plate on the bottom kind of push them to push the two together so they stay equally lined up and make sure that this edge over here is up against where it's supposed to be and not move around there so I can get a nice fit I'm just going to trace this onto the plexiglass now the plexiglass has a plastic coating over it kind of for protection you want to use the sharp edge of your the sharp point of your sharpie in order to get a nice close nice close edge so you don't have to do a lot of shaving later on or a lot of filing later on in order to do this plus with using a flat edge over here I can get away of uh, get away out of trying to cut another side all right so I'm gonna go get my cutting materials and uh, show you how to cut this all right cutting plexiglass it's actually pretty easy although shaping it is a little bit difficult but in this you'll probably see how I do it and how easy it is. It's a little bit time consuming. If you use a jigsaw for cutting plexiglass, depending on the speed of the jigsaw, if you have a dual stage uh, jigsaw, the blade and how fast you go with it, you can end up melting the plastic back together. So you're still going to have to kind of snap it in order to break it, 
loose from the other piece that you don't want and you're still going to have to file and sand that edge because it's going to be a real rough edge. What I do with this here, it makes a nice clean edge. Uh, you have really no burrs, no problems. You may have a little bit of uh, material depending on how it snaps. The thickness of the plexiglass makes a big difference as far as cracking it goes when you when you snap it the two pieces apart. Now this is not really that thick, it's about the same thickness as the cover plate so it should fit pretty nicely in the uh, indentation that's already routed out on the back of the body without having any issues of sticking up really high. And if it sticks up really high I'll end up rounding over the edge a little bit. But all in all they're pretty much the same thickness. So cutting this is going to be pretty simple. So what I am doing is I'll go on the inside of the line that I've already made here and make sure that I see maybe just a little bit of the clear glass on this side where the ruler is. So that way I know when I cut this it's going to cut pretty much the exact same size as what I've already got as far as a uh, the template that I used to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scar this quite a few times and I'm not going to go very fast with it and I got to hold it pretty tight this is where having a nice sharp razor blade comes in handy and what I'm going to do is I don't need this side but I do need this side, so I'm going to come on this side here and just make a few runs just to score it a little bit. Make sure I get put the knife in the crack where I already cut it, push the ruler up against it, and kind of go down a little bit. And that should give me enough to snap this. So, what I'm going to end up doing. So I'm going to move the camera over to the edge of the table a little bit when I snap this. This way you can get a better view of how this is going to be. Now, what I end up doing is I'll put this a flat edge underneath it because this countertop has a beveled edge on it. So I'm going to have to get a block of something that's going to have a nice straight edge on it and something to, on top to add pressure to that on this side. That way when I snap this side, it cuts nice and clean across. All right, so here you see a nice large piece of Basically what this is is flame maple, if you can kind of see it in the light. I picked up a bunch of pieces of this, uh, this here. I got two things I'm going to make out of it. I'm going to try to slice it to make my own caps. This thing is probably like two inches thick. It's got some weight to it. And then the other part of this is going to be used, I got some more of those pen holders. I got, actually I got three of them I got to make. And let's see. I got some other pieces of wood, as you can kind of see here, to make out of, of you know, make some more pen holders out of. Nice pieces, very nice pieces. So I'm going to put the plexiglass on the straight edge of the wood where I cut it. So here is the edge of where I cut. I'm going to take my other flat edge which is basically just the sanding block for doing the leveling on your neck and I'm just going to snap it down holding pressure down very firmly there you go now because this has plastic on the back of it I'm going to have to trim where the cut is on that plastic to remove it so it's pretty simple to cut plexiglass and you know, I still have a whole sheet here for something else. I didn't ruin it. So with this here, what I want to do is I want to remove this piece of wood because I don't want to put any deep cuts inside of it. And what I'm going to end up doing is the same thing here. Doing a little bit to where I still see a little bit of the clear on the inside of the line and we'll go ahead and scar this one too and 
And I'm basically going to do the same thing. Line up the edges with the cut, top and bottom, add some pressure, snap it. Trim off the excess. And it's still a good sized piece to do something else with. Move this over. This side here, I gotta find the flattest spot. It starts to round off. I wanna be on the inside of that a little bit. Put some pressure on it. Line up my edges, nice and tight, snap it. Yeah, decent little piece. Same thing with this edge here. This I'm going to use something to pop it with because it's such a small piece. All right, let me make sure plastic stays out well. Plastic can come off. Actually, that's not the plastic. That is clear coat because I use this to kind of barricade myself, but it still has the original plastic on it. That little piece over here that I want to trim off. Staying inside the line a little bit. tight, pop that off. Alright, so now the rest of it, basically I can smooth over with a file. And it's not that much to be filing down to round off these edges. I'm going to match this back up on here. To see exactly how much I need to cut and trim off, which is really not that much at all. Could have trimmed off a little bit more on this last corner. Just a little bit. But yeah, I just got this over here round off, round this, round this, round this, round that, and round these two edges here. And the rest of it is basically you'll be done. And that I could do with either sandpaper or I can do with a file. All right, so what I want to do is start rounding off the edges of the new panel that I just made. So what I have here is some 320 grit sandpaper, peel and stick. I'm going to lay it down on top of the counter, making sure that there's nothing on the counter that is going to cause a bump in the sandpaper anywhere, because that little bump or debris that's underneath the sandpaper could throw you off. 
as far as making your nice round curves. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start sanding. So I'm going to start rounding off what I see here until the black is gone. Until the black is gone on the mark that I made on the plastic that's protecting the plexiglass. All right, so now I want to mark where the holes are going to be in this. I'm going to end up taking these two together kind of tight so they don't come apart on me. So I'm going to make sure that these holes are in the right spots. So I'm going to even up the edges and pull the tape around the corner real tight. And I want to do the opposite side next. do the pulling of the tape on the top piece that way it evens out the bottom piece and do this on all four sides so you guarantee nothing is going to move around find the right drill bit that'll fit in the hole and I don't feel any play nope everything feels good Smallest car sink bit, where is it? Here it is. The smallest one I got. <coughs> I don't want to go too far deep in there. I just want the head of the screw to be buried, that's all. So I'll get one of the screws, turn it upside down. just want the head of the screw to fit in that taper. All right, so now I want to shield the inside of this. Well, how am I going to do that? Because I want it to be transparent too, so I can see the inside of the body of the guitar. Very easily, very carefully, and here we go. So I want to take the plastic off the back, only for right now. Leaving the front plastic on. Blow off any debris that's on there. All right, so I'm going to cover this, but I'm going to cover it in a certain way. All right, so that area I want to keep physically open, but I still want to shield it, right? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start shielding this.
All right, so Wally said that he couldn't find the cover for the old guitar, so I made a new cover for this guitar. So you can take the old cover now and put it on, actually, oh, that's what I'm going to do, on the other guitar that I did the custom striping on. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in place. Fill right into place. Get the screws. There should be four of them. And we'll go ahead and put this and screw it down. And since it's a carbon copy of the other one, all the holes should line up with no problems. tighten it too tight because you don't want to crack the cover. So one bad thing about these things is they crack easily. window cleaner they still have to polish this guitar a little bit now you have a see-through back cover you can make out that there's CTS pots in there you can see the logo inside there and it's still protecting your guitar from unwanted noise.